Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Unfortunately, we are going live outside of the Gabby Petito Foundation fundraiser with uh, breaking news. Uh, unfortunately, in Alabama, Ed Wallace has been following and monitoring uh, activity. Uh, Cassie's remains uh, were recovered in a shallow grave. Ed Wallace is here to tell you guys some of the details. Uh, I'm here with Joey Brooklyn. He is in the back of the car with us, Diane, and we are here for a fundraiser and a happy uh, kind of uh, opportunity to raise money for our missing and, and to, to bring awareness to domestic violence. And unfortunately, we have this going on. Ed, you want to take over? Yeah, so the uh, sheriff's office in Florida, which is the lead investigative agency in this case, uh, just finished up a press conference with the chief. Chief was very emotional uh, about the find and... Um, what we found out was that uh, using the cell phone, they tracked uh, the, cell, the phone to a, a barn in Alabama, um, uh, and they found uh, Casey's body in a shallow grave in that barn. Um, K Casey's Cassie uh, Carly, Casey Carly's daughter, and um, the, the suspect were arrested in Alabama. And um, on the on the uh, warrant issued from the Florida Sheriff's Office for destruction of evidence, lying uh, about a missing person, and um, and damaging evidence. Um, in addition, uh, now they're going to have to revisit that. Uh, he'll have to go for extradition back to uh, Florida. Uh, right now, the authorities in Alabama are handling the crime scene. The feds are involved. Uh, there's going to be a lot of forensics involved in this, uh, the electronic evidence, the tracking of the electronic evidence, and then processing that clandestine burial grave. Uh, there's going to be soil evidence. There's going to be tool mark evidence, there's a tire track, footwear. Got to find out what he knows about this location. How is, how is he associated with it? Is it anybody, uh, does he know the owners is, or whatever the case may be? There's going to be a lot of additional investigations going on with this. And it's great to see the cooperative uh, uh, work being done by multiple states mm -hmm. and multiple states law enforcement um, on this. Now, the sheriff uh, also mentioned that, you know, Florida is a capital punishment case, uh, uh, capital punishment uh, state. So he hopes this guy gets the needle. Yeah. Cassie Carley, uh, 37 years old, has been missing since last Sunday. It's a, a week ago today. Um you know, we, it's a week ago today, uh, we got this news quickly as we were walking through the uh, Gabby Petito Foundation fundraiser. Ed started listening to it. He got the information. Again, her, um, you know, the, the suspect uh, is now upgraded charges to probably murder in the first degree. Uh, you know, again, we spoke early, early this morning about it. There's the 328 number. Uh, we spoke early this morning about this case. Ed and I went live before we came here to talk about the extradition process. And here we are, another nightmare for the Carly family. These are very, very difficult times for them. Uh, again, I'm here with Diane B. in the back, uh, Joey Brooklyn, Ed Wallace. And thank God, you know, Ed was monitoring as he always is, any good detective will monitor uh, the, the the Twitter sphere and all of the social media and all of the news. It is unbelievable on that. As we are here partying along, doing our stuff and supporting this foundation, Ed tapped me on the shoulder and said, hey, it was almost like a presidential detail. Hey, hey, we got a situation, duty, Ron. So uh, we immediately ran out quickly. And that's why we're, you know, kind of like scrambling for a place to go live. But we needed to bring this to you guys. Uh, again, a tragic end to the you know the story here and uh cassie carley 37 years young uh, a mother of a beautiful four-year-old daughter um just taken by uh, violence again you know and and we have a lot to talk about we're going to continue to follow and cover this case strongly ed and i will be looking at some updates but ed you did listen to the press conference any Additional takeaways from the sheriff. Did he seem visibly shaken? I didn't hear. Yeah, he was visibly shaken, and he put out what we've been saying uh, yesterday and today. If you're going to have these types of transfers and you can't trust the um, parties involved, do it at a precinct. Do it at a police station house. Um, uh, bring somebody else with you. Um, don't be alone when you make these transfers. Right. Okay. Again, an innocent victim uh, of of this heinous crime. And now even the child, what did the child see? What did the ch child uh, hear? Because um, again, 
as I said earlier, you got to track those movements of this suspect as he was leaving Florida and going through Alabama. Right. So he drove into Alabama and, you know, buried this body uh, in a shallow in a grave. Shallow grave in and, and, and they said they identified her by some type of tattoos. Tattoo. So tattoos comes into play. We talked about that right. with Gabby Petito as well. Right. The family gave them um, information about a specific tattoo in a specific location and law enforcement made the ID. They haven't made the official family ID yet. Um, through or, forensics or fingerprints or DNA or odontology. The autopsy will be done tomorrow in Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah. The, uh, the Tennessee authorities have the child right now and they're trying to get the child back to um, the family in Florida. Yeah. GPS on the car is going to come into play here. But uh, the bottom line is, is, you know, we're not going to hear exactly 100 percent exactly how they were able to do this uh, because they want to be able to take this to trial and get this evil monster uh, into, you know, into the criminal justice system and have a guilty verdict and send him to, you know, to, to prison. And in Florida, like you said, Ed, they have uh, capital punishment there. Yes. Uh, and hopefully he'll meet his uh, ultimate uh, judge uh, when they stick the needle in him. Yeah, yeah. This is just, again, uh, you, you know, we, we because of our, our profession and the things that we've done over the course of our time, this stuff is never easy. It's not an easy pill to swallow. It, it, it rattles our cage, even in our retired lives. You know, Ed and I were scurrying to do what we had to do. There's music going on. There's a festive ap ap atmosphere inside there. We told Joey, we told Diane, let's gather our gear and Joe Petito came and sat with us and we told him, I think he knew what was going on. I, I don't know if he heard about it, Diane, but you got, we were all talking to him. So uh, Joe Petito was- um, As uh, he was passing, he asked me what oh, was going on. Right, so he passed our booth and said, what are those two doing or what's going on here? Mm -hmm. um, and he was just on a live with us talking about, if you see something, say something. His daughter, again, fell victim to uh, domestic violence to, you know, Brian Laundry uh, viciously murdered his daughter and, uh, you know, did a sim similar thing and tried to cover it up and try to deny it and try to run away from it. Um, you know, we, I don't even want to mention this perp by name because he is as evil as evil can get. Um, because your back's against the wall and you have to now pay for a, a, a little child that you brought into the world. You know, it takes two to make a baby, right? And he now, his back was against the wall and he was like, well... You know, I'm, I'm going to just, I'm going to silence her or whatever his thinking process is. It's ass backwards. And that's not how it goes. But like Ed said, um, I mean, Ed, Ed, Ed's coming up with some great points on all of our streams, but he just said it well. If you're going, please, please, single moms, single dads, but especially, you know, vulnerable folks, if you're making an, an exchange of custody, do not go at it alone. Bring a male with you. Bring somebody who can be a, a witness or a protector. Uh, and unfortunately, that's where we've we're, that's where we're at right now. You know, and, and I hate to say it, but I, I wouldn't recommend I wouldn't recommend anybody going in a in a very vicious custody battle or a, anything that's tumultuous where there's back and forth. You heard her brother say on hey, on JB on WFLA now, he said that he put a gun up to her head in the past. She said to them, if anything happens to me, it's him. And here we are, fast forward a week later. Yeah. Look, folks, your first line of defense against being the victim of crime is you, not the police. The police are not omnipresent. They can't be everywhere when, you're, when they're needed, okay? When seconds matter, they're minutes away from a 911 call or longer depending on the jurisdiction so you have to know how to protect yourselves you have to know what to do to keep yourself from being a victim of crime and i am a big pro proponent of the second amendment if you can get a gun get trained get a gun and and have it at your ready because it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it yeah, you know, and, and there's a lot of folks that are out there that are against guns, Ed, you um, know, so that is, uh, again, a, a common sense statement, and I, I concur with what he just said, you know, but there's a lot of folks out there that don't believe in guns, so uh, if you don't believe in, uh, in, in what Ed has just said, at least bring some layer of protection with you. Bring someone who is legally licensed to carry a gun or somebody who can handle themselves where can, they can be your first line of defense. She came as a single mom by herself, 
and we'll never know. We can never, you know, do this Monday morning quarterback thing. It would be unfair to do that. Uh, but what we're looking at here is another senseless murder at the hands of a domestic partner. You know, they were broken up, but they were co-parenting. You know, he had every other weekend, he had uh, rights to see uh, his daughter, uh, you know, Sailor. And it was supposed to be a simple exchange. Um, and, and everybody's going to ask those questions. Why did she go alone? It's so sad, Alicia B. I agree. And thank you to all of the replay viewers, the moderators, the people who are here. Listen, we're human beings. This is a live stream. We'll misspeak on words. We'll misspeak on people's names. But you know what? No, this is not, we're not a, a computer. We're not machines. We're human beings. So when we go live and we talk about this stuff, you know, sometimes there'll be missteps. And you guys got to understand that. Uh, it is what it is. Yeah, and we may get pushed back by people saying, hey, innocent until proven guilty. That's absolutely 100% correct. But historically, statistically, and, and based upon our training and experience, we said this yesterday, nine out of 10 times, the suspect, the guilty party, is the ex-boyfriend, the boyfriend, the husband, okay, or the ex-husband, and and it plays out time and time again. And here's another case of it. Um, so uh, it's just so sad. Total innocent victim, and now not only uh, is the woman murdered, but now the child is traumatized for life and has no parents now. Yeah. Yeah. All right, because one is going to go to jail eventually, right. and the other is now in heaven. Yeah. Cassie Cawley, uh, again, 37 years young, a mother of a beautiful four-year-old daughter, uh, Sailor. Uh, again, she has to go through her entire life. Like her sister said in the, in the press conference, Cassie's sister said, Sailor is asking where mommy is. Where's my mommy? Uh, and now there's no answers for this. You know, there's no good answer for her. You know, how do you tell a four-year-old you're... Your, your mommy was murdered by your dad. It's, it's just horrific. It's and, a, and I don't understand, after the violation of the um, terms of uh, visitation rights, once he was found with her in Alabama, why was he returned to him in Alabama and not brought back to Florida? But she was, in fact, returned to him. They let them go, and then they were, were arrested in Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he is definitely a flight risk. Yeah, 100%. Julie Rock, what a great statement. Let's learn from this. Let's start a movement where we have, have no more single drop-offs. Uh, I, I agree. I mean, if, you, if, you, if we don't learn from this, you know, uh, there's going to be nothing that we learn from. So let's take this as a learning curve. Let's pray for, uh, you know, uh, Cassie's family, her sister, her brother, the, her, you saw her school, uh, school classmates, her lifelong friends on here, Hey JB on WFLA now, just a couple of short days ago, pleading for, uh, for her return to find her. And now here we are, another horrific end to one of these cases. They don't always end, you know, well, uh, these cases, especially when you have long periods of time where nobody, uh, is hearing from them. So, uh, again, I want to say thank you to Nancy Eileen, Shannon Candela, um, all of the folks who are here, Karen Barton. Uh, thank you, Janine, Kerry, Vicki Lane. Let's throw up some prayer emojis and some hearts in the chat for um, this, again, another, yet another victim and, and their family who we need to try to rally around and support. And, uh, you know, now is just going to be a time for them to grieve. And again, tomorrow uh, and going forward. The only things that Ed and I will talk about is the legal process. We're not going to talk about condition, what was the body like, what was, it, you know, we're going to let this family grieve their loss as we always do. Here on Crime Time with Duty Ron, it's, it's, it's about respect for these victims and their families. And uh, I, I'm going to, we're going to take a pause. We're going to, we're going to cover the, the legal and the criminal side of it. Um, but uh, again, when the conversations and questions come up about things that, um, you know, could be hurtful to this family if they hear it right now, they are in the worst case scenario. I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. Right, Ed? No. Um, you know, uh, we all know what loss is. Ed and I survived uh, 20 plus years of high risk patrol and investigation. The World Trade Center, 93, 2000, uh, you know, 2001. Um, n numerous uh, victims and crime scenes at its process. 
uh, numerous members of the service shot and killed, line of duty cancer deaths, Ed lost his own brother. We know what loss is about, and it's about respect, again, for the families, for the folks who are going through it now. And again, we had to come live to you quickly here from the venue. We are in the parking lot. We're, we're outside the, the parking lot here. We're sitting in the car, you know. We got Diane in the back just uh, hanging out, watching the chat. Joey Brooklyn is behind me. So there's Joey. He's watching. He's staying. I'm watching all the time. He's staying, staying silent and watching. But, you know, again, Ed, uh, I, I want to say thank you to Ed Wallace for uh, putting us onto it. We would eventually have caught it. But Ed was like, boom. It, it, it almost reminded me of, like, the, you know, the way that a good team works. Ed tapped me on the shoulder and said, hey, we got something going on here. We, we got to go live. And uh, kudos to Ed Wallace. And that's one of the benefits of having somebody who is so dedicated to uh, covering these cases. So thank you, Ed, for uh, putting us on to this today and, and the coverage. We're going to watch it closely. Anything, uh, anything final for the, for the folks here in the chat? Well, um, I'm getting some more breaking inf information that the uh, tattoo was on her foot, yes. ma making it an even uh, more unique location uh, and the type of, um, of tattoo. Um, so again, they still have to do the forensic identification. They still have to do the fingerprints or the DNA. Uh, you can't just go with that tattoo or a facial recognition by the family. Um, yes, another horrific death of a beautiful, innocent woman um, who just made a bad choice in her relationships. Yeah. And, and you want to just quickly recap, because I know you got your earbuds in. Uh, again, news conference just a short time ago by the sheriff local in Florida. It looked like it was the same sheriff that I saw quickly uh, from, you know, that uh, initial area giving the press conference uh, and giving out the information. Whereabouts in uh, Alabama did, you, did they give out that information? Because I didn't hear the presser. Yeah, it's uh, along Route 11, I believe he said, or along Route 11 um, on their way to uh, Birmingham. Yeah, so... Uh, we talked about Birmingham last night. We talked about it today, uh, early this morning. Uh, I was on the phone with Dave Rader on the way to the venue here, and he was talking about um, that ride from from Florida straight up and into Alabama. It's uh, kind of close to where Twyla lives, Twyla Cisco. So uh, EquiSearch was watching it closely, not to do investigation, but to do um, help to do recovery uh, and find. Uh, it's St. Clair County, Alabama, Springville, Alabama. Um, <clears throat> that's where the farm was. Okay, so it was, on a, it was on a farm? Oh, no, a barn. In a barn. Barn area. So, yeah, uh, just uh, terrible. Tabitha Till Tilly, thank you so much for being here. Nikki Bella, Miss Donna Marie, thank you. Carol Love in Alaska. Okay, new, new more breaking information that this barn is associated next to a residence where um, the ex... Uh, uh, has some kind of uh, uh, connection to that residence. Mm. So lots and lots of information uh, coming in. It's all breaking. It's all happening now. Ed has got his earpiece in. He's listening to uh, some uh, stuff that's going on, on on the internet right now. So things will, uh, you know, things will develop. Things You'll hear more and more as the day goes on. But, you know, the bottom line is, is if we have a victim, a 37-year-old mother, uh, Cassie Carley, uh, deceased, found in a shallow grave outside of uh, a barn-type area in Alabama. Uh, just a horrible, horrible situation. Uh, we're all not surprised, uh, but, you know, when you hear this stuff, you, you, if you're not human and you're not shaken by it, then there's something wrong with you. So, it, for me, um, as, more, as, as many of death investigations I've been around in my course of patrol and uh, in my experience with the NYPD, this stuff never gets uh, easy to take, you know. Um, let's just see what happened here. We got a little super chat. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Moskowitz. Duty Ron and Ed, platinum professionals always. Thank you, Julie and Ed. And I could tell just by the way that that's set up, that's uh, Julie, his, <laughs> his wife, because Dr. Ed wouldn't be texting red hearts and uh, stuff like that. But if it is Dr. Ed, I love you too, Ed. Um, so Dr. Moskowitz and his wife, Julie, who is a nurse, their family physician in their hometown, Pocatello, Idaho. We love you. We thank you uh, for the support. Uh, Brenda, much love to Duty Ron and Ed Wallace. You are the best. No, you are the best. 
you guys are the best. So Ed's got a lot of traveling to do. Um, he traveled all the way from Staten Island to come out here. He's going to go see some family. So we're going to kind of cut this short. Ed, any final words for the audience or anything additional that you want to add to it? Well, just prayers and love sent uh, to the victim's family and prayers for Casey and her daughter, um, Sailor. Um, and may God have... Uh, Mercy on her soul, and we may she rest in peace. She's in a far better place than we are right now. So, um, just horrific. Yeah, I agree, 100%. Alicia B, thank you for the $20 super chat. She sends in a super super chat, and she says, you gentlemen are always watching and teaching us. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Alicia B. Uh, without great folks like yourself and uh, this learning audience of Crime Time with Duty Ron, you know, uh, somebody said it once to me recently, you know, uh, I think it was actually you, Alicia. You said that you were on some other people's chats uh, without mentioning names. You were, uh, yeah, Ed, Ed's got his, uh, the, the bagpipes playing. He's getting in uh, messages. Uh, you said it, Alicia, great that you were on somebody else's chat and you were, you were saying the difference between here, the chat here in the comments and in the chat session about how educated the audience is here on Crime Time with Duty Rod. So the regular folks that come on here learn quite a bit about Investigation 101. So, and that's thanks to Ed Wallace and myself for bringing you guys good, valid, re reliable information from that police perspective. So guys, if you haven't hit the, the thumbs up button, consider hitting the thumbs up button, subscribing to Duty Ron and Ed Wallace so you'll get everything when we go live. Cheryl and Schofner says, uh, sends in a twenty dollars super chat. She says, "Always count on you to bring us the latest." Thank you. Um, I may head back inside just to say goodbye to Nicole Schmidt and um, and, and Jimmy and the, and the whole crew. So I, I might just go back inside myself and, and say goodbye to them. But we're outside in the parking lot, courtesy of um, you know Ed Wallace finding out this breaking news. I know again, eventually we would all heard about it, but it was happening. It was live. And even Joe Petito came over and was like, hey, what's going on? And, and I gave him a briefing of what happened. And you know what he said? We got Naomi. We got Cassie. When is this going to end? When is this going to stop? You know, his daughter was taken away from him just a short time ago. And here we are trying to raise awareness and funds for domestic violence and search groups. So, again, sad day. But thank you. Thank you, everybody. There was a super chat that came in from Adventure Roads. Venture Roads, uh, uh, a correction officer in the Illinois area. Green Spring, great job, Duty Ron. Thank you. Thank you to you and your wife, uh, Cheryl. I think we got her. We got her. Did I get everybody? Uh, Marilyn. Marilyn, thank you so much for the $20 super sticker. That's a, an adorable one with a big hug with the hearts. Thank you, Marilyn, for your support. Ed and I appreciate it. If you're not yet subscribed, subscribe. Uh, become a channel member if possible. Uh, support us on um, on, uh, you know, all the f social media platforms. Patreon is a great way to support this great community. Again, we left a thousand dollar check for the Gabby Petito Foundation, courtesy of you great folks that are here. And I appreciate everybody that donates and that gives, um, gives part of themselves, um, whether it's monetarily or by your kind words and messages. It is always appreciated. All right, guys. A lot of love and respect from Crime Time and Duty Ron and Ed Wallace, Diane B, Joey Brooklyn. They are here in the, the Duty Ron Mobile. We're uh, we're live outside of the uh, Gabby Petito Foundation uh, fundraiser. Take care, Ed. Any final? I know you. Stay safe, folks. Just stay safe. Stay safe, everybody. All right. Ciao. See you soon. Bye for now.